Oh, Yat Ebene. Good. Um, welcome to the March 15th uh, issue with the, of the COVID-19 Town Hall Update. Uh, good morning, everybody. It's good to be with you all. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we do have another rendition of uh, Town Hall Update here. So President has and uh, a little change up here. We don't quite have, uh, I guess, the uh, IHS uh, uh, piece there with us, although I did see Dell is with us, perhaps for some numbers, our epidemiologists here uh, on Navajo. So uh, and we look forward to, uh, again, more robust uh, discussion and bringing on um, bringing on the um, um, new new updates, new information. As you know, this uh, pandemic is, uh, is uh, the numbers are looking good, but uh, still not out of the woods, still not out of danger. So uh, we're going to talk about some of the latest decisions on the updating the public health uh, emergency order. So here we go. Uh, let's open up in prayer. And then Jonathan is our president is waiting in the wings. God, God, we thank you for another day, another day of life, another day of, of work, another day of uh, caring, another day of outreach, uh, another day of guiding and leading a, a people, Lord, your people. Here, as we um, are in the two years into this pandemic, this virus has wreaked havoc on our nation, Lord. But we pray, Father, for those that uh, are dealing with hardship, those that are dealing in fear. Lord, we pray that uh, your grace, your mercy is sufficient for us and that your peace would uh, descend upon the people of the land, that we could be blessed and that we could be uh, re-energized and revigorized and uh, just uh, re uh, put more in tune with you and your ways, your laws, your principles, Lord, which live uh, for generations. And Lord, we thank you that you are God and you created us and you know everything about us. And this pandemic did not surprise you, but you use it for our good. You use these hardships for our good. And the lessons that we learn and the pressing in and the prayers, Lord, may they be heard, Lord Father, may we all live our life to become a better version of ourself, Lord, uh, modeled after you, Lord, for we are created in your image. So everything is meant to return back to you, Lord. May our speech, may our ways, may our actions, may our decisions, Lord, honor you in every way. In Jesus' name we pray, Lord, pray for your wisdom today in which to lead and guide this meeting. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. So again, thank you for joining us. March 15th here, uh, COVID-19 Town Hall update, two years into this. I'd love to see what number this this version is uh, if we were to look at the number of town halls that have been led. And, uh, you know, we, we've talked about over, it's way over 200, I'm sure. So we're all uh, well learned in how to uh, guide and, and use these town halls and uh, we see the numbers drop i guess it's not an extreme emergency but still a great way for your leadership to chime in with the uh the um, residents of our great land here Denetra. and so we pray blessings upon you always so without further ado ladies and gentlemen we do have our president jonathan nez here waiting in the wings here to give his updates and to bring a message of a uh, encouragement and uh, blessing to the people of the land. Mr. President. Okay, thank you, uh, yeah, uh, Vice President yeah, this kid did the question skagin has its art that he can he never that told Nagi a conde ye and the Dan he not told that is not a ye that she a ya ya this kid given in the door the dice start the door the door double not the teacher a conde and then you can deal in a gishi but the host net door less honest honest so to Chicken or 
kehuit ego and the eya kompi kiji di in de bahti and his ya is nigi nigi chiton is a big dust here a contract of cart and never care of a carja and the eh there has ani had it a thought the she a ya belagana became at the she a nachikoda yila and the con the master days in she came of thing out of condo me person did it today I am not kid the media in a tell though a chin a has time as a thing in a tell a condi jacodal yes as a handy papa uh handy papa a conda being uh could you person kid a days eagle though yeah the honey and he she a handy a not source had that the left door a she a school a day in law she a condi jacodal in that door let's see so she came of thing so had I not that she came of thing I shone uh Allah Asa Nesna in the media general tell a con person does me Kongi Jekodalia Dina source peso the book cargi so a sheep should ask in the left door uh a dad house yeah late oh the gun be key ho uh John Dark Kregor in a Yahaba and Gunda Kregor あの、だどんなと、ちょっとバーズのなそやで、ペースチレ、タニゲンリーワシントンで、マジャスタギドナタニダムゼニギエ、ホットアイヤナダスリン、ディナスネギ、ベナチシンスラシエコン、ドンダ
throughout the Navajo Nation, outside the Navajo Nation, that are still tuning in. And I appreciate you turning, tuning in because, uh, you know, it, it's easy to say, oh, we're out of the pandemic now, low numbers, I don't need to get informed, but we need to continue to uh, get the information out to our citizens. We're not out of this pandemic yet. And we need to continue to keep our guard up uh, through these difficult times. You know, yesterday, yes, there are only three positive cases and no deaths. So we thank God for that. We pray for those that have lost loved ones. If you put the first slide up, uh, Eli, 1,657 of our Navajo people have lost their lives to COVID-19. This week will be two years since the uh, the COVID-19 entered the Navajo Nation. And we've lost many, and, and we, we, including myself, you know, lost family members. We all have been directly impacted in one way or another by COVID-19. But you know what? We're resilient people. We are going to move forward, strive to do our very best for ourselves, for our families, and for our nation. Uh, and it gives you the breakdown of the cases since it started. You know, 52,712 have been uh, have caught the virus, and some of these are duplicates because you can catch COVID twice. Uh, recoveries at 50,909, you know, those are uh, a lot higher uh, because, you know, the data is, is slowly coming into our uh, Health Command Operations Center of people who have recovered. You go to the next slide. It just gives you a two weeks, 14 day glimpse of the total cases per day, which is the blue line and the yellow to brown line is uh, the death rate. As you can see, uh, we, even though early on we had some high cases, not many people ended up in the hospital. So I'm sure people are going to be studying how well the Navajo Nation has done fighting against COVID-19. As Dr. Fauci has, has mentioned, you know, this is a case study or an example of how a region working together can push back on COVID-19. Yes, one death is one way too many. Our thoughts and prayers go out to the families who've lost loved ones. But compared to other uh, states, other jurisdictions, you know, our rates, COVID positive, as well as uh, the, the death rates have been extremely low. Let's continue to pray for those who have lost loved ones. This year is the two year, uh, this, this week, I'm sorry, is the two year anniversary of uh, COVID coming into the Navajo Nation. You know? And we recognize and we honor those who lost their loved loved ones and who passed on throughout this pandemic 1657 people and we'll continue to pray for them for their families uh if you look at the third slide and gives you an overview back in April of 2020 uh, and into June, you see that first spike in cases. And at that time, we didn't have no vaccine. And as you go into December 2020 and January 2021, we see another spike in cases due to the holidays, holiday gatherings, social gatherings. And that was the time when we first got our vaccines. And then we saw some low numbers throughout 
2021 until we saw August and we started seeing all the way into December of 2021. It wasn't as bad as the 2020 Christmas and Thanksgiving, New Year's holidays, but it was significant. And then you see in, in January and February 2022, that big um, surge, Delta and Omicron, Omicron variant. And it did progress. So what I'm looking at here is, yeah, we have gone through some surges. And when we go uh, past the surge, we tend to let our guards down. And let's not do that. Let's just keep following. We got a mask mandate still, still in place. Wear your masks. Follow the protocols that are in place. Because we don't know the future. We don't know if there's any other variants that are coming into this country. And we just need to be on guard. Go to the next slide here on the Navajo Nation. We're encouraging people to get their first and second doses. Uh, and their booster. Now, for Navajo Nation Executive Branch employees, we mandated uh, that all our staff be vaccinated because we, Navajo Nation government, uh, provides the direct services with our people. And I always said that we're not going to close our government down, so we need to protect our employees and protect our clients, our citizens out there. So that is the reason why we mandated the vaccine. And if you can see the orange there or the yellow, the first and second doses with Johnson & Johnson, one dose, are now one issue employees then 98% fully vaccinated with the first and second shots. And then we also mandated the booster shot, which is the third shot, 91% of our Navajo Nation employees are fully vaccinated. Uh, that includes first and second and third dose. The reason why it's still low is because some people are not at that six months for the booster shot. And so we're going to keep updating you all on where the Navajo Nation government employees are at with uh, with the vaccination as well. And if you go to the next slide, this just gives you an idea. These are Navajo Nation residents overall, how well we are doing by age category. 42% of the residents, these are the only the first and second doses, five to 11 years, 42%. The reason why is that th that age category uh, didn't get okayed until recently to uh, get their vaccines 5 to 11 years old. Now, if you go to 12 to 19, that's 73%. And I contribute this to um, students wanting to go back to school, you know, and wanting to be in school. And parents, you know, you are wanting your child to get vaccinated so 73 percent and these are only Navajo Nation um, residents uh, if you go to 20 to 24 years we need to do a little better on that 58 percent I know that young people may feel that their uh, their immune system is strong yes that that may be true but you still can't catch the virus 64 percent of the 25 to 44 years 45 to 64 years, 83%. And that's a, a good percentage. And look at our elders, 65 and over, 89% vaccinated. Again, first and second doses. So we appreciate uh, everyone uh, getting vaccinated. We appreciate what you all are doing to help uh, your family members. Now, as we see some low numbers, we're going to be slowly uh, taking some of these restrictions off. Uh, travel restrictions will be reevaluated. 
gathering limits as well. Um, you know, temperature checks. Uh, some businesses are still requiring temperature checks. Um, so what it is optional. So businesses can take that uh, temperature check off away uh, from, um, you know, as you enter into the business. Uh, the business reopening will be reevaluated as well. And, uh, you know, the latest one was going from red to orange status for schools. And schools uh, are encouraged and, and recommended that they give the parents the choice of hybrid, in person, and or uh, virtual. So that should be offered by the schools. Uh, 15 get, uh, people uh, for non-classroom instruction events, such as back to school orientations and other community gatherings. Sports events attendance is 50% maximum occupancy, indoor and outdoor seating areas. We'll be uh, issuing out a um, graduation promotions uh, protocol uh, soon as well. And I know some people are asking about the fares. As we monitor the COVID-19, uh, we are in the process of developing some protocols for the fairs. I mean, at this point, with the low numbers, uh, and we all know what to do, uh, if we don't get another surge, it sounds uh, like the fairs will be uh, scheduled this year. But again, following um, some of these different protocols, you know, vaccination, uh, if there's tight space, uh, tight uh, tighter gatherings uh, in like um, tents and all, then we may have to require vaccination cards or 24-hour uh, tests, negative tests to go in there. But again, we're just, we're, we're in the process of developing those um, protocols right now. At this point in time, uh, it looks favorable, but uh, as we go into the weeks, months, um, towards uh, the graduations and promotions and affairs will we'll keep everybody updated through these town hall meetings. Uh, and, and this week, again, I'll end with this, is the two years uh, since the COVID-19 has had entered the Navajo Nation. Let us pray together and lift up these families who lost loved ones. Let us also lift up uh, the folks that have are recovering from COVID-19. A lot of people are recovering still, so have some health problems. Let's join together in unity this week uh, and pray uh, for those that have been um, uh, impacted by COVID-19. And I think that's probably all of us throughout the Navajo Nation. So let's uh, continue to be strong and be together as we have done throughout this pandemic. And you have all done an outstanding job, Navajo people. You have persevered. Uh, this should give us a glimpse of how our ancestors came together in difficult times. You know, a glimpse. I'm not saying it's the same, but a glimpse of how our ancestors came together and helped each other out throughout the long walk and coming home and looking towards the future by listening and, and following directions and following our, our leaders, our public health you know, professionals. And I commend each and every one of you for uh, following uh, your public health experts. Uh, this is why we say this is the great Navajo Nation because the Navajo people are resilient and strong overcomers. So thank you so much. God bless you. Have a blessed week. And we'll be turning uh, the time now to our Vice President, uh, Vice President Myron Leiser. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, again, good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Uh, it is a, it's a good day. 
spring has sprung it seems like beautiful weather out there get out and enjoy get some sun vitamin d all that get active um little, just a little word of encouragement i don't have my my numbers and of course again it's 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 a lot of good numbers out there as you see the numbers <clears throat> declining just uh recently removed from all of the state basketball tournaments you know thousands and thousands of people joined uh together in Arizona and then New Mexico in varying gyms, varying locales, but there'll be uh, the telltale sign of the numbers in a couple of weeks on what that looks like. So uh, alluding to what President has said about the, the fairs that are being considered and contemplated right now, you know, uh, the fact that the discussion is starting this early is uh, needed because those fair organizers and managers and uh, everybody that works on these need to start planning now and uh, ordering stuff and preparing and getting their committees all in line and <clears throat> there's a lot of hands on hands on deck so to speak with that so planning starts now for a successful fair in you know the, the, the summer starting in July end of July for Eastern and then they kind of flow westward to October so anyway, that's, uh, you know, some of you may or may not agree on the, the need to, to, to have those discussions. But as the numbers de decline, you know, you can kind of read uh, between the lines, so to speak. And, and that, that is our hope. That is our prayer, you know, ever since day one in the first month, the first quarter in the first year has always been our prayer. And so just wanted to bring, I guess, uh, a little bit of backdrop to all, maybe if we could just encompass all of, of uh, the two years. Wow, <laughs> two years, would have thought, right? Uh, we often have these thoughts and the, these discussions as we muse, as we contemplate in our quiet times, you know, who would have thought President Nez and I would be the leaders here during this time through a COVID uh, pandemic and, uh, and yet we were and uh, you know we we are thankful uh, president and i grateful and our prayers have uh have been well chronicled over the two years and, and and it's good and we can all look back and say it was all for a reason all by design our creator's design and you know one thing that we've always talked about is that you know what the enemy meant for good for evil that god can turn it around and use it for our good so a little bit of encouragement today, and I, we don't deny that there was hardship, that many of you have suffered loss, that there's loved ones that have uh, gone into the, the spirit world, and there's many that have uh, succumbed, and many are struggling, left uh, dealing with um, physical therapy and trying to get back to uh, a stronger life, a stronger foothold. And so just a real quick reminder, a word of hope, a word of encouragement that our Creator God, again, was not surprised by this. And uh, He's there with us. He's holding our hand. If we could all close our eyes and lift up our hand and uh, grab His hand, and He'll lead us through this. And that's always been His way, His method over since time immemorial. Our Creator God is always there. Shazat Din, God is always there with us. Just a prayer all the way. So I, I leave you with some encouraging words. You know, in God's hands, intended evil becomes eventual good. Uh, such strength, such encouraging words. Uh, Genesis 50, 20, as for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good in order to bring about his present result, this present result, to preserve many people alive. That's powerful, to preserve many people. And even though we did lose a lot of people, <laughs> those that are preserved, uh, man, yeah, yeah. I hope you're found praying and prayerful and thankful that our Creator God has spared us and that we're still here. And meant to be the stronger, the wiser, the learned, the the hopeful, the encourager of up through it all to our family, our friends, our community. May our communities be blessed because of this. May our communities change and thrive because of this. May our land become prosperous because of this. You know, there was an investment and we reap a return. So what are you returning? What are you hoping for? What are you prayerful for? What seeds were sown during this trying time? I was sent a, um, some good words to contemplate. 
<clears throat> by uh, a friend and uh, it's simple uh, simply a poem you know poems are powerful i think some of you love to read poems some of you write poems i wonder what kind of poems were written during this covid 19 time when we were all sequestered and when we were all trying to stay safe stay alive and, and all that and so hopefully your decisions weren't based on fear you know fear this is a bad thing fear is uh, something i've pushed away as quick as i could because uh, i'm you could say i'm learned you know I, I don't make decisions based on fear some of those are much uh scrutinized by you know the the masses out there but uh, that's just me and people's re a perception of me is not my reality and so as i read this here think about it it's called good timber and i'll leave you with this and then we'll introduce dr jill jim here uh shortly uh, as we contemplate opening up as we always felt like we could open up and recover safely and uh, i believe we still can and those businesses that are open now and uh, the mom and pops and the uh, side uh, flea market vendors i mean <laughs> never seen so many happy faces uh, out there and they're just beaming making money putting food on their their family's tables this uh, poem is called good timber the tree that never had to fight for sun and sky and air and light, but stood out in the open plain and always got its share of rain. Never became a forest king, but lived and died a scrubby thing. The man who never had to toil to gain and farm his patch of soil, who never had to win his share of sun and sky and light and air, never became a manly man, but lived and died as he began. Good timber does not grow with ease. The stronger wind, the stronger trees. The further sky, the greater length. The more the storm, the more the strength. By sun and cold, by rain and snow, in trees and men, good timbers grow. Where thickest lies the forest growth, we find the patriarchs of both. And they hold counsel with the stars, with whose broken branches show the scars of many winds and of much and much of strife. This is the common law of life. And so when struggles come upon us, and they do, trials and temptations, they're all designed to create a more vibrant you, a more resilient you, just like our president said, you know, ego. life is in my hands. Life is in your hands. What will you make of it? And certainly coming through a pandemic, what will we make of it? We'll look back and someday we'll, we'll remember the toil, we'll remember those hard times and we'll, we could become the better for it or we'll stay there and see how, you know, we've, we've, we're stunted growth, so to speak, stunted health. And so these uh, times of uh, being resilient, uh, many men and women, our ancestors have been in this place to go forward or to stay status quo or to stay at the same level. When all of these hardships and trials and tribulations and the fire are meant for us to aspire to look up and to see our creator God and to see the power and to see what we were created for, to walk into all of our destiny the legacy of life, the legacy that we'll leave behind. You see, a man is certainly blessed when he leaves an inheritance for his children's children. And that is an inheritance. And then legacy, the legacy is what we leave in somebody. And so inheritance, legacies, these will all be left behind when we are long gone. And prayerfully, uh, we leave this pandemic behind us. And we count ourselves as stronger for it. In reminding of the poem that I just read, The Good Timber. I hope many of you are finding yourself and are looking at the trees. If we all need to be reminded of this, we'll go to our, our local forest and we'll look and see the trees and contemplate our creator, set these trees here for us to use, for us to be blessed with. And he set us here to use, to be used and to be blessed and to, uh, bring about uh, good relations with our Creator, Creator God, Shajadian God, are you good timber? 
such as the common law of life. And so I leave you with that, just some encouraging words. And even though we've all endured, we've all come through these trials and temptations of this COVID pandemic, uh, let us be the better for it. Let us be and reach for the stars. Let us reach for all that we can do that's humanly good. And may it all be good for our loved ones and our family and our communities. And for it's not for our own. None of it is for our own. Even the hardship checks that are coming out, let us use it for good. Let us invest. Let it become fruitful for those that we will leave, leave it to them as an inheritance and a legacy. Let's create legacies going forward by Navajo, by local. Stronger bodies, stronger minds, stronger souls, our mind, our will, and emotions all pointing us to a more resilient future. So we appreciate you. Thank you for joining us again, March 15th, uh, COVID pandemic. It does certainly look uh, like the pandemic is waning, is going away. But again, we still have to be mindful. But as we do that, we can always be um, um, uh, remember where we came from, where our families were. And those that have endured hardship, may our your prayers be heard, and may we all continue to pray for every one of our citizens here and residents on the Netva. And uh, may God bless you and encourage you. And may he uh, uh, show through the, the timbers of life. And may his light shine on you and your family. So be blessed today and uh, go on and become more prosperous, become stronger, more healthier. Invest, you have to invest through these hardships. So I can't. May God bless you. And so, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce Dr. Jill Jim, our Executive Director of our Navajo Department of Health. We appreciate her leadership. And uh, thank you, Dr. Jim, for all you do. And God bless you. And thank you for your information here that you will hand out to us. And so, thank you all for joining us. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Jill Jim. Thank you, Vice President, and also for your kind words and reminder on what we need to do in this ongoing pandemic. It's not over and it's not enough to say that we're in an endemic, so our rates are still quite high. So I am Dr. Dill Jim. I am the Executive Director for Navajo Department of Health. Either on social media or he the um best behind the epigate though and the um to legislatures and everywhere, just reminding um, that we are still in a pandemic. And I want to thank their leadership for also reminding everyone that although um, states are lifting restrictions here on the Navajo Nation, we're slowly lifting restrictions while the numbers continue to go down and they seem promising. Um, it's all due to everyone on the Navajo Nation with your vaccine efforts. So vaccines are still quite important and I just wanted to just share um, one slide just basically just for a reminder to everyone that um, the COVID-19 vaccine that too is not enough so get your booster now for better protection and um, we're really focusing on individuals in the schools school age children to get um, if they're eligible for a booster shot or if they're not fully vaccinated to see if they can um, also make sure that they get their um, vaccine. So we want our can, our kids and children, our um, grandkids to continue to be in school all the time. And we know that previously that the pandemic, um, when things get closed or shut down, yes, it's very difficult, but now most schools are open and we just want to make sure that we continue to keep them open. And that means that we are encouraging kids to get their um, shot either their full primary series um, for um, Pfizer and also any booster shots for Pfizer as well for those that are eligible. And then although those that haven't get vaccinated, um, I hope that um, this has shown 
that it is clearly um, evident that vaccines do work and we want to continue to encourage you to seek information if there is any hesitancy or if there's misinformation about vaccines. And I think it's just to kind of um, figure out how to um, get correct information or visit your primary care provider or a doctor and ask more questions about the vaccine if you haven't get a shot. And also there's a lot of misconception about the vaccine as well. And just because you may have gotten COVID even last year or half a year or six months ago, sometimes you might think, well, I'm protected and I don't need a vaccine. And that's not necessarily true. So um, to some extent, yes, it is, but not entirely, because um, if you did get COVID like over a year ago, you probably don't have um, any protection from that um, from that anymore. So if, um, if you could just get more information on getting um, your primary series done as well, I think will be helpful. All the facilities have enough vaccines and also there isn't a vaccine shortage, as I mentioned, and then also some are still doing vaccine drives. And I just want to also thank the Office of the President and Vice President for all going out there and providing um, quality masks and, um, and then also disposable masks and other ones that you can combine so you have a tight fit on your mask. Um, to p individuals in the community. So um, those are still happening. So uh, make sure that if your chapter should also be receiving um, N95 or KN95s across the Navajo Nation. Um, I call your chapter to see if they uh, picked up their um, mask yet. And we also will be uh, working with them to pick up some um, cleaning supplies and things like that. Very small amount, but it's uh, worth a try to see if your chapter um, picked up their supplies and uh, most chapters have um, in some cases and in, in certain agencies I think central agency has um, all chapters have picked up their supplies so just stop by your local chapter house to see if you can get your quality mask that was really um, at the request of the Navajo Nation to the White House and we worked with FEMA to um, provide us um, quality mask because during the Omicron surge, we were like, well, we need quality masks for us to really defend ourselves and protect ourselves against Omicron. And um, we, we received them and we're now providing them. And there is still a mask mandate here on the Navajo Nation. So just continue to wear your mask indoors and outdoors and then practice the three W's as well. Continue to um, watch your distance, wash your hands and uh, also wear your mask. And those are just basic um basic strategies we know that have worked for us every single day so remind others and just because um restrictions are being lifted the lifted doesn't mean it's over the thing that we need to watch for is there are still um high uh, there are still increases in cases internationally and sometimes it's among that those that are unvaccinated so not our entirely our entire population is vaccinated so we're going to continue to see cases to some level and we're doing good but um it, lifting restrictions and masks around us and if you're not continuing to practice mitigation strategies and also um combining that with uh, the unvaccinated individuals um we are monitoring um how lifting these restrictions will impact the states and if numbers will increase or not in a couple of weeks because it takes a while for for this to occur it's not immediate when um you lift restrictions um sometimes it takes a week or two for people to get infected and then you'll see um a rebound in which we don't want to see but we know that um it could be possible because it has happened and we know that um, COVID is not really eliminated. So, um, and I just hope that everyone takes the opportunity to um, sort of uh, remind ourselves that the pandemic's not over, but we need to continue to practice um, and, and protect ourselves from getting COVID and, and also realizing that we are in this situation and just embracing the existence that we have here every single day. And thankfully that we're not seen a lot of people sick so i just wanted to share that and reinforce the um the importance of vaccines and that we still need to um watch what we do every single day and then i'm just thankful all for the health care providers for what they do and 
the CHRs, health educators, um, behavioral health, the EPI um, staff here, and all the health facilities and their staff, hopefully with the numbers being down, they are addressing um, some of the concerns that we had during the pandemic is this complete burnout. So um, that's what we want to make sure that we are prepared. Um, and we hope we don't see another surge or another variant, but that's really unknown. Um, so I just want to reiterate the importance of um, that COVID is still here. And I'm going to go ahead and hand over time to Dell, but I just want to thank all the listeners that are tuning in. Um, so Dell, um, go ahead and take it away. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Jim, President Nez, and Vice President Weiser, my colleagues, and everyone on the town hall. Thank you all for joining us. My name is Dell. I am with the Navajo Epidemiology Center. I am also part of the HCOC COVID epidemiology team. And this is our latest, these are latest numbers for our gating measures. Uh, a two-week time period here from February 25th through March 10th. And some of these uh, President Nez covered, so I'll go over uh, them again very uh, quickly. So this is our recent cases and trends uh, covering a 60-day time window here. So this is um, uh, this highest bar here I'd like to mention in the presentations this is back in January 18th so since then we've been on this downward trend seeing a decrease in cases for about two months now so and of course that's a, a great great news for us um, on the nation seeing less COVID cases uh, each and every day so which reflects our seven-day infection rate it continues to be below one. One is our threshold, so it's 0.76. And then this is our case incidents across Navajo Nation. Um, here, I'll just go over this orange box over here. This box used to be red, so now it's uh, turned to orange as far as just to represent our COVID response level on Navajo. As we see less cases, uh, we've gone from red red level to orange level currently. So there were 80 new cases in a seven day period from March 4th through the 10th, and which puts our, puts our seven day case rate at 50 cases per 100,000 people, which is in the, our, the orange level. And even this uh, transmission level went from high to uh, substantial transmission. So again, um, good signs. Then over here on the map, all of the service areas, IHS service areas, including our bordering states, are in this zero to 199 seven-day case uh, case rates. Um, so again, um, great signs. And then here are additional metrics: the lab-based test capacity. Our seven-day test positivity rate continues to decrease as well. It went from 15% last week to 9% this week. So, uh, and then our average daily test in a seven-day period is 455 uh, tests are conducted, were conducted every day. So testing continues across Navajo Nation and our hospital capacity here as far as hospital beds and ICU beds they uh, continue to be below 80%. 80% is our threshold. So again, that's also good news. And this is our just epi curves for the entire pandemic. The blue line is the US and the orange line is Navajo. And over here on the right side of the chart here is uh, we're seeing, we continue to see a decrease in cases, uh, as I mentioned on Navajo Nation and also across the United States. And then this is our seven day 
incidence bar chart here from March 4th through March 10th, comparing Navajo Nation to the 50 states and a couple jurisdictions. And we are down here. This orange or yellow bar is that we're at 44th um, position. Um, so again, that's a good sign. And the red bars are bordering states, uh, Colorado, New Mexico, and Arizona are are up here with the higher seven-day case rates. Just want to remind everyone that although we are seeing less cases, the risk, uh, COVID risk, and transmission uh, around us uh, remains uh, remains high. So it's just a reminder. And then, like here, as I mentioned, here is the seven-day case rates uh, across the U.S. Um, the COVID risk and transmission within our region uh, remains high. As displayed here by community transmission, all the counties within Navajo Nation are, are red and orange. So um, the only change here, uh, San Juan County on the Mexico side uh, has turned orange from red, and then as well as San Juan County over on the Utah side has turned orange as well. So again, um, but that's still, you look at the legend down here, it's still substantial risk for COVID transmission, including high transmission in other counties within Navajo Nation. So this is, uh, this is, our team is working on updating this table, the COVID strain surveillance on Navajo Nation. So I'm reporting the numbers from, from last week. So Hopefully this will be updated um, tomorrow. So comparing report 44 to 45, it went from the Omicron variant, went from 1389 to 1455. So that's like 66 uh, new cases that were identified um, for report 45. And then the Delta remained, Delta and all the other variants remain the same. And this is the latest COVID variant profile according to CDC across the country. As you can see, it's uh, mostly uh, all the, the Omicron variant and its sublineages um, continue to be the predominant variant across the US. I'll just highlight that this BA.2 uh, lineage increased from, I think last week was 11% to this week is 23%. So. The BA.2 continues to increase uh, each week um, across the United States. High risk ch chapter list here. The lead, there are 11 new chapters made the, or 11 chapters made the, the high risk uh, chapter list. So this, the, the number of chapters that make the list continues to decrease as well. So that's also a good sign. Last here, our risk level assessment cases continue to decrease, and we have entered the orange um, level or the orange threshold, um, and rates continue to decrease. And as I mentioned, we're still uh, at high COVID risk and substantial transmission. Lab-based test positivity continues to decrease, uh, at nine percent, and hospital capacity remains stable. And we are now in the orange level, according to our, our numbers. And that's a good, good news um, going from red to orange. So uh, we haven't been orange in, in, in a long time. So I'm going to stop here and hand it over to uh, Shema, Dr. Fowler. Take it away. Division of Human Resources Division Director Angela. Kokoroshe e o chidas tanon hinat anin lini do 
เอ่อตอนนี้ก็ไปเห็นนิดนึงตอนนี้ก็ไปเห็นนิดนึงตอนนี้ก็ไปเห็นนิดนึงตอนนี้ก็ไปเห็นนิดนึงตอนนี้
Ada <laughs> Nikis <laughs> Adon <laughs> Nikitate <laughs> A masan a chain has twin his ani than a lenny, a ma a jet and a sahida, or what the bend that not change a kedo should ne, deni hanan or tani arch, which is sad, lenny baby tree, a jet here, take it at old king, which kege on the winners and all job at his the hot net, drain he need kid, coyat eho nadi kato, yat eho, slump nihena that all has a kedo should ne echo, ye go at yado. Nihizaba Akhwatiya, don't you know Nihita, don't ask her gone